Now towards the end of the rule of Ad-Dajjal, how long is he going to rule for? 40 days. Towards the end of this rule, his forces will be attacking the army of Imam Mahdi, which by that point has become very weak. As I said, everywhere he goes, he will defeat the Muslims. So by now, the Muslims, the Islamic Khilafah is very weak. And they've actually withdrawn all the way into the city of Al-Quds, their capital city. Of course, you defend your capital more than anything else. So they've withdrawn. Imam Mahdi will give the order that all of the forces should come back to Al-Quds for a final stand to protect the Khilafah so that it would not be destroyed. And so they would go and they would lock themselves, they would barricade themselves into the city of Al-Quds to stop the army of Al-Masih al-Dajjal from entering. And so they're waiting. They're waiting, this massive army who's defeated them everywhere they went. And now there they are waiting in Al-Quds, waiting for the final attack to occur. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a help from the heavens. When the Muslims at their weakest point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send one of his great soldiers and warriors who will descend from the heavens. Allah the Almighty will send Isa alayhi salam. Jesus peace be upon him will return. He will descend upon the city of Damascus, resting himself on the west, resting himself on the wings, on the shoulders of two angels. And he will descend. He will descend. And the Prophet peace be upon him even told us which minaret in the masjid of Damascus he will descend to. And so Isa alayhi salam will return to earth. And he will make his way straight to Al-Quds. He will go straight away to Al-Quds without delay. From Damascus, he will go to Jerusalem, to the capital of the Khilafah. And he will find the Muslims getting ready to pray. Because he will arrive at the time of Salat al-Fajr. And so the Muslims are there. The Adhan has been made for Fajr. They're standing up, ready to pray behind their Imam. Behind their Imam who is Imam Mahdi. And so Isa alayhi salam will join the lines. He will join the first row of the Salat. Now imagine this, subhanAllah. Imagine you're praying in this Jum'ah. Your Imam is Imam Mahdi. Standing next to you is Isa alayhi salam. Ya Allah. How would this be? Who wouldn't want to be among them? The Prophet ﷺ said, When you know he's here, go to him to give him your bay'ah, even if you have to crawl over ice. Yet you know how many Muslims there's going to be behind him? How many Muslims in that jamal? 1,200. How many Muslims do we have now in the world? About 1.7 billion? Is it going to be 1,200 Muslims? After all of the fitan that have taken place, after all of the death and destruction, the believers will only be 1,200 in number. 800 of them men and 400 of them women. And so this blessed jama'ah will go to pray Salat al-Fajr. Now Imam Mahdi, because of the small group, he knows everyone in his army. He knows who they are. He looks to his jama'ah just after the iqama is made. He's ready to pray. He looks to the Jama'ah and he sees a face that he's never seen before. He sees a face that he's never seen before. And at that point he realizes that he is Imam Mahdi. For the face that he sees is that of Isa alayhi salam. And so he says, this is a prophet. How can you pray when there's a prophet in your Jama'ah? He will say to him, come and lead the Salat. But Isa alayhi salam will say no. The Iqamah was made for you, and so you lead the Salat. And so he will lead them in Salat al-Fajr. Ya Allah, imagine being there at that time, in this Jama'ah. You have the forces of Al-Masih al-Dajjal outside the city waiting to besiege you. You have Imam Mahdi leading you. And possibly, we would assume, two people are going to be praying right next to Isa alayhi salam. Imagine this, next to you is Isa. Ya Allah, what a blessed Jama'ah this is. So they will pray Salat al-Fajr. They will pray their prayer. 
And as soon as they finish, Isa alayhi salam will stand and he will rise and he will command the Muslims, open the gates. Remember, the Muslims are afraid. This massive army coming to destroy these 1,200 believers. And he will stand and he will command them with no fear. Open the gates. Let them in. And so the Muslims, they will hesitate. They don't want to open the gates. But Isa has commanded them. So they will go forth. They will open the gates. And the army of Al-Masih Dajjal will pour inside. They will pour inside the gates, killing every Muslim that they can see. And at their heads will be Al-Masih Dajjal. And so Al-Masih Dajjal, this is his victory that he's been waiting for. He's about to destroy the Muslims. He's going to kill their leader. He will finish them off and his war is complete. This is the victory that he has promised his believers. He's been telling them the whole time, we will finish them off and the world will be ours. And they have no doubt in their hearts because they believe that they're led by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the forces will pour in. And Al-Masih Dajjal, he will go, he will enter. And Isa alayhi salam will be standing there waiting for him. As soon as Al-Masih Dajjal sees him, as soon as he sees him, the fear in him is so great that he, as the Prophet peace be upon him said, he would turn around and begin to run and he would begin to disintegrate. Like out of fear, he would disintegrate. And Isa alayhi salam, as fast as anything, would run forth with a spear in his hand and he would grab Al-Masih al-Dajjal and he would put his spear inside of him and kill him and take it out and hold it up high so that everyone can see the blood of their Lord. They can see the blood of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. They can see the blood of their false leader. And they would know that indeed, he has been killed by Isa alayhi salam. And so that's it. So they've been defeated. Yes, there's a massive army, but they're only fighting the Muslims because they believe that their leader is Allah. As soon as Isa alayhi salam kills him, every single one of them will stop. Every single one of them will lose hope. They will sit down confused, not knowing what to do. And the Muslims will be victorious. So this is the end of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Killed by the noble messenger of Allah, Isa alayhi salam. But it doesn't end there. The Muslims would finish off all of their enemy. Anyone who continued to dare to fight them, they would be fought. This is the time where we know that the Prophet peace be upon him said, a Yahudi would hide behind a rock. A Yahudi would hide behind a rock or a tree, and it would call out, O Abdullah, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come kill him. And so their forces will be absolutely defeated. So now what happens? Isa alayhi salam, Imam Mahdi, now they have absolute power, do they not? Isa alayhi salam will grab the followers, and he will anoint their faces. Al-Masih in Arabic means somebody who anoints, somebody who does masr. So he will anoint their faces and he will tell them of their place in paradise. This blessed army of 1,200, he will tell them of their place in paradise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal a revelation to Isa alayhi salam. Allah will reveal that verily he has raised a people from among his creation that nobody can fight. Therefore gather my servants at the mountain of At-Tur. Now Atur, there are two mountains known as Atur. There's one in Palestine and there's one in Egypt. Which one of them it could be? Allah knows best. Allah will say to Isa, after he has just killed Al-Masih al-Dajjal, that he's going to raise an army, send an army that nobody is going to be able to defeat. Not Imam Mahdi, not Isa alayhi salam. And so he will take the people away from Al-Quds, and they will flee to At-Tur. Who, who are these people from the creation of Allah that Allah would send? Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Ya'juj and Ma'juj, as we know, Dhul-Qarnayn. 
put them inside of a barrier and there they would remain until the end of times and they would come closer and closer to breaking this barrier one day the Prophet ﷺ said woe to the Arabs woe to the Arabs for verily a hole has been placed in the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj of this size woe to the Arabs on this day so we know that they will appear. Allah will allow them to appear as soon as Al-Masih al-Dajjal is destroyed. And no army will be able to fight them. You thought that the army of Al-Masih al-Dajjal was something? The army of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is going to be far more intense. They will cause destruction on the earth unlike anything else ever seen. To the point that even Isa salam will not be able to defeat them. And then at the peak of their facades, at the peak of their destruction and mischief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a bug among them that would make them sick. And this sickness would destroy every single one of them. And this is one of the signs of the last day. After the coming of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, we don't know what will happen. Imam Mahdi is not mentioned anymore. It could be that he dies. And Isa alayhi salam will rule for the rest of his natural life. And so, this is what will happen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us about this great fitna that's going to occur. Now remember that I asked you in the beginning, how many of us have heard people talking about Imam Mahdi during a Jummah khutbah on the minbar? None of us. None of us have heard this. Now I'm going to tell you one of the signs of the coming, sorry, of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. I'm going to tell you of one of the signs that the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that must terrify you. The Prophet wasallam said that one of the signs of the imminent coming of Al-Masih al-Dajjal is that nobody will talk about him for many years upon the minbar. Nobody will talk about him, meaning the people will not discuss him. Throughout history, he has always been discussed. He has always been warned about by every prophet from Adam alayhi salam until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But just before he comes, nobody will talk about him on the minbars. This in itself is a sign that his coming will be very soon.